In this video, we will discuss a signal reconstruction algorithm where any additive error metric for evaluating the algorithm's performance can be used. The motivation for our work is that we're facing a deluge of data due to people taking pictures, recording audio, and making videos. Sometimes the image, audio, and video files take up a large amount of storage space. In other cases, it would take a long time to transmit all of this data. To reduce these storage and transmission bottlenecks, it's desirable to compress the data as much as possible. At the same time, when the data is retrieved, we want to reconstruct it accurately. For some types of data, it's possible to compress really well as long as we allow some small error between the original input and the reconstructed data. These errors can be quantified with some error metric. For example, square error is commonly used, whereas absolute error might also be useful. Let's discuss how some of these practical compression and reconstruction problems can be solved using our new algorithm. The data is some sort of signal. How can we model this signal? Well, the signal is composed of numbers, and we model it as a vector. The entries of the vector could be pixels of an image or frequency components of audio. We call the signal vector x. How do we actually compress the signal x? The compression technique we use is called compressensing. Loosely speaking, compressed sensing takes signals and compresses them during the actual sensing process. As an example, consider an image. Instead of acquiring all the pixels of an image, we only acquire or measure linear combinations of those pixels. We, are, we acquire several such linear combinations of pixels and call each of them a measurement. You could think of a measurement as a weighted average of pixel values where we use different weights for different measurements. The number of measurements is going to be smaller than the length of the input signal, and so mathematically speaking, what we're doing is multiplying the signal vector by a fat short measurement matrix. Because the matrix is short, the matrix vector product will be a short vector, and this process is analogous to compression. Unfortunately, in many typical systems, the matrix vector multiplication is performed in analog hardware, and noise is introduced into these measurements. The way how we model the noise is that we add a noise vector to the compressed vector, and the result is our observations vector, which we call y. Our goal is to reconstruct the input signal x from the noisy observations y. How do we do that? Using the observation vector y, we want to find a good explanation to the input signal x that matches the observations y. We call that explanation x hat. Is our reconstructed signal x hat any good? Well, in order to design good reconstruction algorithms, we're going to need to quantify the reconstruction quality. To evaluate the quality of signal reconstruction, we define an error metric between the input signal x and the reconstructed signal x hat. We begin by calculating the error vector. To do so, we subtract the reconstructed signal vector x hat from the original x. We then compute the error metric as a function of the error vector. The error metric has an additive form, where on the slide, the function d is a scalar function, meaning that it's a function that is applied to only one of the entries of the error vector. We aggregate or sum up over all the values of these scalar functions for all the entries of the error vector. As an example, you can consider a square error metric, which is the sum of the squares of the error vector entries. Another popular error metric is absolute error. That's the sum of the absolute values of the entries of the error vector. How does this algorithm actually work? In explaining how it works, we're going to assume that you have some basic knowledge in statistical signal processing. After the error metric is defined by the user, our reconstructed signal x hat is chosen to minimize the expected error. To compute the expected error, we need to know the posterior distribution, which is the probability of the input x given the observations y. How do we calculate this posterior? We utilize the decoupling principle. Recall that we're currently modeling the observations as a matrix vector product plus noise, and the decoupling principle says that in the limit of large signal dimension and large matrix, there's another model that is mathematically equivalent. The new model is a scalar model. It consists of a set of parallel Gaussian channels, and the new model is simpler than the matrix vector product model. Using this scalar model, 
the posterior can be easily calculated. Because of that, given the observations y, we can compute the expected error. We complete the reconstruction process by choosing x hat to be the vector that minimizes the expected error. Note that the decoupling principle allows us to compute each component of x hat independently of other components. This is a scalar estimation approach, which is a lot simpler mathematically and computationally than vector estimation. Let's see how well this actually works in practice by looking at numerical results. In this first plot, we use the absolute error as the error metric and compare our algorithm to two other well-known algorithms, RelaxBP and COSAMP. The horizontal axis here represents the number of rows in the measurement matrix, where we note that the actual matrix had 10,000 columns. And of course, fewer rows means better compression. The vertical axis represents the absolute error. You can see that using only 3,000 measurements, we already get pretty good compression because the error is reasonable. Note not only that, but the error achieved by our algorithm is 20% lower than the errors achieved by two other algorithms. Similarly, in the second plot, we define the error metric to be the square root of the absolute error. Again, our algorithm achieves significantly lower errors than those achieved by the other two algorithms. To summarize this video, what we're really doing is we apply the decoupling principle to turn a matrix vector product problem into a scalar signal estimation problem, and then we minimize the expected error. This procedure allows us to better reconstruct the data regardless of the error metric. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you want to learn more about this work, please visit our websites. Thank you.